So up next we have Richard from Kernel. He's going to give us a talk on cost optimization and cost control. His AWS bill is skyrocketing. No one? No? You're spending, not spending enough? You want to spend some more? Yeah? Okay. Here you go, Richard. Thanks, Sarah. Alright, guys, first of all, I just want to apologize. I've been a little bit under the weather lately, so if anything I say doesn't make sense, first of all, sorry about that. Uh, nothing contagious, guys. Don't worry about it. And I'm on a, enough painkillers at the moment. Cloud health. It's not your oh, it's not my health, no. Uh, I actually collapsed on the bus like, yesterday going home from. Uh, they're working me too hard. <laughs> working me way too hard. So, they, they put my picture. I didn't put my picture on that presentation. So, you've got to look at me now. Uh, yeah, so guys, I work for a company called Cardiff. And I, I guess I want to start by just saying that was a fantastic, fantastic demo by David. I used to give that demo, very similar demo when I worked at CA Technologies. I know, I'm sure you all know CA. And I worked in this DevOps space. And the difference was we charge us a lot more money than <laughs> what that demo would cost. So that was a fantastic demonstration. So who here doesn't know Cloud Health? Oh, a lot more than I thought. I've got a few slides in a minute that will uh, explain who we are, and I don't want to go and talk too much about who Cloud Health is. The approach I wanted to take to this presentation was something a little bit different. I didn't want to go through and talk about what our technology does. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is one of the key challenges that you know I've seen in our customer base. I'm new to the cloud space, so I come from a very heavily data center centric background. I've built data centers, automation solutions, solutions for the largest telcos across Asia Pacific. Uh, the banks have been very heavily involved in automation, mainframes, green screen. That's my background, and I remember about five years ago. Uh, Elise is here, our, our head of APAC, but telling my friends cloud will not take off. Cloud is BS. It's, you know, security teams, I don't know if you've ever worked with security teams in banks or telcos, they, they will never allow cloud to take off. I was wrong and now I'm working in cloud space. But yeah, what I want to talk about is a big challenge that you know all the companies we work with, and we work with the biggest cloud vendors globally and in Australia and New Zealand as well. We've got essentially the largest cloud users in Australia using our platform. And it's primarily around cost optimization. That's a fantastic word. Sounds like something Gartner came up with. But yeah, cost optimization is actually a very important topic at the moment. And I don't like necessarily going through slides, so I like some interactivity. So if any of you want to challenge me on anything you see, if you've got any questions, I've actually got a few vouchers. I heard the best way to get people to talk is to give something away for free. So I've got a few event vouchers. Can I get the flu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, they should be somewhere over there, just in the one of the pockets. But uh, come see me if I uh, decide your question's worth it. I've got a voucher to give to you guys. Right, here you go. So let's get into it. First, who's actually implemented some form of cost control within the organization? Anyone? Yes, Perfect. You get a first uh, voucher. <laughs> hey. Cheers. Yeah, do you want to just talk just quickly, very quickly? Yeah, I've only got 15 minutes. I don't want these no, guys yeah. ringing the bell. You've got 30 minutes. Um, okay. We're using Splunk um, okay. for AWS. Yeah. Yeah. It taps into various accounts and then it'll give you some stuff on how many how much money I can save if I buy reserved instances and stuff. Yeah. And uh, do you use it for reserve, reservation purchase? Not yet, but that's what I mentioned. Can't get your head around it. Yes, that's one of the biggest challenges organizations face. It's not just procuring reservations, it's seeking business, business justification or presenting a business justification and proving that through analytics and through reports. For me, I look at cost optimization. Again, this is going back to my background in transformation as essentially a transformation journey. And I don't want to harp on about this, but transformation is really about having the foundation, having you know, business approvals. Of, I've worked for a lot of failed transformation projects. Some of the biggest in one of the big telcos here, they're on the third implementation of transformation. 
And the best description I ever heard was, uh, I was at one of the CIO summits and it was the CIO for Bank West. He said, for transformation to be successful, you need to define what transformation is. You need to explain to the business, you need to seek approval. More importantly, you need to have KPIs, measurable KPIs that you can actually go upstairs and say, we achieved the goals we set out to achieve. Same with cost optimization. Customers say, we want to reduce our cloud spend. I do not see that personally. That, that, is, that could be a goal, that could be a KPI, but if you're looking at onboarding more applications, if you're looking at increasing your cloud usage, then telling your boss that I want to reduce our cloud spend and getting that as one of the key metrics that you're going to be evaluated in the success of this program, well, you're, not, you're going to fail. So when I talk about cost optimization, I talk about it from these three key areas, efficiency. And to cut away from all the fluff, what is efficiency? It is actually looking at your current state, understanding demand. Uh, I don't know if anyone's gone through an infra infrastructure modernization program. I've gone through a few of those a mainframe modernization program. It's, it's understanding what's in the pipeline for your organization. Also understanding what uh, initiatives that your organization's looking at that could involve cloud and planning for these, so putting the controls in place, which is point two, putting the controls in place to make sure that as you onboard more applications, as your cloud grows, you're not just blowing money away. Because that's one of the biggest complaints I get from our customers. I'll use Suncorp as an example, fantastic customer of ours. As you onboard more applications, as you move towards maybe you become more mature in your cloud strategy and start to use containers and start to use all the advanced features, well, you allow people to just provision infrastructure and then all of a sudden your cost skyrockets. And finally, it's you know, any transformation, people, process, and technology. It's leveraging technology that works, leveraging technology that can help you achieve success in your strategy. And that's a fantastic segue to my next slide. Cloud Health, who are we? I'm not gonna talk about this slide too much. This is one of those slides that just explains the nitty gritty. We have thousands of customers, we've got the biggest names. For me, this is the most important slide. We manage over $4 billion of cloud spend in AWS alone. I don't know if you guys are familiar or aware of what AWS's total revenue is from cloud. That is, I would guess, based on the last figures, approximately a third to a quarter of all cloud spend in AWS we manage. We've got customers who, whose bill is up to $50 million a month utilizing cloud health platforms, that's in the States. The other, the other part I want to talk about from a cloud health perspective, and it's not on this slide, as similar to the guys from uh, Dynatrace talked about, is in terms of velocity that, to which you release. We have, I think it's about a third of our organization, maybe higher now, are developer, engineers, or product guys. And that's because we need to keep up and maintain the same velocity that AWS maintain, and the way that they release. Example, uh, who here knows, who here knows uh, when AWS released uh, the one year convertible? I can't remember. Last myself. year. Last year? That's, that's not, that can't, it's gotta be better than that. November. <laughs> It was November? Okay. I'll take your word for it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they released one year convertibles in, in, sorry, in November last year. Within, I think it was a week, we had support. So reservations is one of the key aspects of our platform, purchasing reservations. We had support for one year convertible a week after they were released. So as soon as AWS released, uh, I think they're up to their velocity is something like thousands of releases a week we try to maintain a similar velocity. So that's enough about that. This for me is the most important slide. And I didn't want to talk about this presentation I said in terms of what Cloud Health can do. I really want to talk about how we've helped our customers. And this isn't specific to Cloud Health. I mean, we help customers with optimization. But the way I look at this is this is a blueprint for success. And it's not necessarily that you have to, you know, go through every single phase and address every single point on there. But I've been at Cloud Health now for a few months only. I'm new to Cloud Health and I've had a lot of conversations and what I've built here is essentially a phase approach that I see works. And we actually have a service offering around this. So if you look at this, we sort of 
phase it out into three, well, three areas, three phases. You know, first one being onboarding. What is onboarding? And again, I should point out that we talk about the phases in what we call the three key pillars. First one is visibility. Uh, second one is optimization. That's where most people look at to you know, manage costs. And the third one is government. So from a visibility perspective, what we start with is making sure that we've attributed a cost to all the assets. We create the logical groupings. You know, most people look at this as tags. You know, they'll just define groups by tags. We've obviously got more intelligence. But you need to define how you want to report back to the business. Because that's critical. You're the CFO who wants to understand what is cloud costing and how can you make the BUs, how can you make the application owners accountable for their costs. So we help organizations build these groupings. And as you move through the phases from a vis visibility perspective, sorry, from a visibility perspective, we start to get to more advanced areas of reporting around uh, financial tracking, amortized, amortized uh, reports. And so that's essentially the visibility. Optimization is where most people will, will really look at in terms of driving cost control. And this is really two key areas, it's right sizing reservations. Uh, let's talk about right sizing for a second, because <laughs> I've had a lot of conversations with customers about right sizing wall sizes, and they all look at me and say, this is fantastic, we want to right size our environment. But no one wants to right size. The application guys don't want to right size because uh, the application, though, the, the specs of the software they're using says you can't reduce this server to certain specifications. But in terms of right sizing, it's, I look at it as a key aspect of cost control because essentially if you were able to reduce the size of this specific instance, R32XL to an XL, you'll essentially save half the cost of that instance. But it is that simple mathematic, mathematically. But how do you right size and how do you get the business to buy in? It comes back to phase one, right? It's having the metrics. So phase one is about onboarding, getting the metrics. So if you've got the actual metrics around memory, CPU, disk, if we talk about EC2, EBS is a different kettle of fish altogether. But if we look at EC2, if you've got the actual metrics there and you can measure and build, as we see in phase two, build a baseline around these metrics. And I'll explain how this works. I'll talk about some again. the customer that I, I worked on a specific uh, strategy with. So we've got all the metrics in their system. Again, it's the same metrics I just mentioned there. And then we build the baseline. Baseline is very important because what we do with the baseline is we made the application owners you know, accountable. How we've done this is using those groupings. We actually grouped the assets, the, the instances we wanted to present back to the application owners in smaller segments. So we're not giving them a list of a thousand servers and say these are our recommendations. We start to you know, define, define, define these groups. Development servers. So let's start with just the development servers that are memory intensive and we're able to do this. And we're also able to, when I say baseline, we're also able to, I guess, modify, for lack of a better word, the algorithm we use. So you can start to weigh memory. So if we're talking about memory intensive applications, we can weigh memory higher than we weigh CPU. And we can change the thresholds. So uh, I know certain application owners hate looking at average. So we can define the policy that says, you know, if we're looking at high workload, high spike, applications, then let's go by max. Let's not just look at average, let's look at max memory, max APU, and let's build our baseline based on that. If it, I know they set the threshold, if it hasn't maxed that over 50%, well, this is a candidate for right sizing. And then we start to implement in phase three, uh, you know, governance or controls around this and send, send events out, send notifications out. We have detected a server that hasn't been utilized, hasn't reached a threshold in a week, two weeks, a month, take action, otherwise we'll shut this server down. We've got customers who do that because they now want to make the accounts team, they want to make these, they want to make the application owners, infrastructure teams accountable for this cost. So does that make sense, guys? Question, go for it. How are you different to cloud chicken spottings? Does yours more holistic and they focus just on... Yeah. How are we different from those? We're better. <laughs> cloud chicken is a competitor of ours. Uh, we have, uh, I'm actually going to go into right sizing in a, in a little bit, in a couple of slides actually. But we actually allow you, as I said, to define these baselines, to change the metrics you use 
to measure what right sizing means, what, what an optimal or uh, what a candidate for right sizing is. Uh, you know, you classify your compute intensive infrastructure in one group and then weigh CPU higher and then whether you want to define 50%, 20%, 30%, whatever you define the threshold for a candidate, you can build this into the policy so that if this specific team who's running a, a in-memory database says, no, no, we need to make sure that we don't, we don't want to go over 50%, we can build specific policy for them. And that's what I guess our customers have found very useful. And again, we talk about max. I mean, we get a, you know, we, we use the metrics from AWS, but they don't provide all the metrics. Uh, they don't provide memory, as an example. So we can hook into like the CloudWatch or some of the APM or monitoring tools to retrieve these metrics. Sounds very consultative, your process. Why isn't it just a nice, easy reporting tool? Oh, it is. It sounds consultative. Everything's out of the box. So it's all policy-based. Uh, if you're building these baseline, these policies, you just go in and give it a weight. So if you wait from one to ten, give memory a weight from one to ten, you define these logical groups. It is all based. It's all configuration. It's not consultative. You see, Peter, let's get to the next slide. So what I want to talk about now, that, that's the whole approach around cost optimization. I actually want to, yeah, go for it. Please. Sorry, I missed that. Any expense? We've got customers. Oh, sorry. We've got customers. As I said, the smallest customers. We've got the largest customers. It's all based on your know, percentage. It doesn't really matter. It's it's when you really want to start to. If you know, I'll say it's anyone who uses cloud. But to be quite honest, it's. Once you're starting to see issues around management, or, or even if you're looking at you know, strategies around, say, DevOps, which is you know, containerization, stateless architecture, where you want to manage, this is one specific example. We obviously do a lot more. But once you want to manage a cloud and have complete control over your cloud, that's when you look at cloud health. Sorry, guys, just give me one second. All right. So now I'm going to bring it back to Cloud Health. That was a strategy. That strategy I just showed before, the blueprint I call it, wasn't necessarily around Cloud Health. That's why you mentioned it looks consultative. That's because I didn't want that blueprint to be specifically Cloud Health. Now I'm going to talk about how Cloud Health can achieve just some of the key activities within that. I didn't know we could have a demo. I would have shown this from a demo. I saw the Dynatrace next, side. Next time. next time I'll do a demo on all this, just to show how easy it is. But this is how we define these logical groups. This is the first activity all our customers undertake. What makes us different from a lot of the competitors is we don't just use tagging. We're able to define these logical groups based on any metadata. Uh, we also, <laughs> fantastic example. And, uh, anyone here ever try to look at how many uh, different ways they've got the tag environment within their cloud? E and V, capital E, lowercase e, M before N, N before M. Uh, <laughs> I've seen every combination. What we can do is grab all of these, I guess, ways you define environment and group them into one logical group. So we'll take all the tags, we'll take the values, we'll group them together, we allow you to say, okay, this is actually the same group. Then we can look at, say, the name, name of instances, and we can associate that with a specific group. So we've got more ways. We also look at associated assets. So if you've tagged an instance and you've got volumes and so forth, we will grab that into the groups as well. So it makes creating these groups much easier. And you can then start to, I guess, reduce what we call unallocated assets. Assets that haven't been allocated to a group because there's no way to identify where they belong. And that's one of the key activities. Uh, one of our big customers, well, they're not that big. They're not that big, they're about 20, 30K a month. They, the guy we're working with, he had a task by CFO. He, he needed to get up to 95% accuracy. He actually spent about a week building out perspective. And that's because he had no tags in the environment, he had nothing. So he spent about a week, he got it to 95% accuracy. I think that was in terms of cost center. And now he uses that across the whole <coughs> platform. And he CFO gets these reports delivered on a cadence, a monthly cadence. I think it's a first of the month. Oh, uh, next, next key activity in terms of what I call phase one is a quick win. Yeah, providing cost and usage reportings, you need to show that you, you can uh, attribute a cost 
uh, to the asset, but it's zombie infrastructure. Uh, when you remove an EC2 instance, but the EBS volume doesn't be, it's not removed. Every new customer we walk into and we run this, it's a report we call Health Check that highlights wasted costs around EBS volumes. I've seen every figure from a few dollars to thousands of dollars, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars of, of volumes that are just sitting there that haven't been used in weeks, but they're still racking up costs. Same with EIPs. So it's one of the first activities we tell our customers just to prove to your, your bosses that we can get a quick win is let's look at now, unattached EBS, if it's been unattached for two weeks, let's chuck it in cheap storage to start with and remove those volumes. Does unattached mean not associated with even a snapshot? Oh, with an instance. Yes. So, if you've deprovisioned the instance, but the volume's still sitting around, even if there's snapshots, that's different. But we're not saying to remove, in phase one, we're not saying to remove the EBS volumes. We're saying if it's been over a certain period, so what I tell my customers is if it's been over two weeks and that EBS volume has not been attached, let's back it up to cheap storage, cheap S3, and remove it for time being. And as when the business cries on an application only if you need it, comes back and says, what happened to my volume? Well, we'll bring it back up and tell them, you know, we've got a policy in place that says you cannot have it unattached for two weeks, otherwise we'll back it up. And all of a sudden, they then, uh, they're more careful in how they act. But you're only reporting on it, you're not providing the mechanism for me. We can. That's actually phase three. Uh, it's not in here, but in phase three, when I talk to customers, as they become more mature, I mean, I'm talking phase but really as they become more mature, what we do is implement a policy in the government section to detect a volume that's been unattached. The way I built it for one of my customers is, as soon as it's unattached, let's just send an email, notification. It's been unattached for two weeks. Uh, let's shoot off uh, what we call critical alert. Oh, well, actually, no, for them it was a high alert. And when it's been unattached for a month, we take automated action. And that's been defined in the blueprint. So they've got a tag and taxonomy they've defined. We also put in a whole bunch of ways to manage ERPs, manage EBS, etc. Phase two, there's really two key activities. We've talked about right sizing in, in, I guess, a bit of detail already. But this is what it looks like from our platform. And I guess this is a good example. I'll put it here on purpose because you can actually see that if we were basing this just on average, I will tell you this is what we want to write. So this is a good candidate to write. So the average CPU, average memory, hardly ever hits above 5 10%. But we also provide the intelligence, the, the uh, graphs and leads behind this to say, wait a minute, let's look at maps. So now what? What you're actually doing, again, remember phase two, what you're doing in this phase is providing the information to the application, to the infrastructure team to say, now have a look at this. Uh, this is a, it says we believe is a good opportunity for right sizing. Uh, what do you think? We would recommend that you right size this because they're the ones, typically most organizations, they're the ones who are paying for this in infrastructure. So if the head of the team, if the lead for the team says, and we need to reduce costs, I'm telling you, most of them will say this, then, this would be, well in this example, I wouldn't right size it. But, you know, if you see that the average or max is further down, well, yeah, why not? Now, my favorite, reservations. Who here has actually, uh, or is responsible for purchasing RIS? Anyone? Fantastic. <laughs> is it fun? No. No, it's not, is it? Uh, I haven't found a customer that finds it exciting, actually. The biggest issue isn't the purchasing of our rides, it's getting the approval upstairs to say, yeah, if you want to outlay a certain percentage or, or amount up front, or if it's you know, no up front, well, the business usually turns up and says, I don't think we need it. Just let's look at a smaller percentage. What we do in terms of reservation is pretty cool. We allow you to model an ROI. So we build a quote. You can actually purchase an ROI directly from our system, but what most people do is allow you to export this and you can hand it off to your AWS rep. We've got approval. So you can hand it off to them and they will go procure this ROI for you. We will come up with the most optimal solution of an ROI purchase. And we allow you again to model this. If you want one year, three year, all up front, partial up front, we will detect what is the best option. A lot of people don't realize that. You can't really see here, but the difference between an all upfront and, and a one year upfront is only 2% in this example. 2%. So what we're saying is, if 
it's less than three percent, and you can change this, then let's go for partial upfront because you'd rather have the capital on hand. That's that's only two percent. It's less than inflation. So again, we allow you to completely model an ROI, and then from there we allow you to drill into each line item for each specific instance and have a look at why we came to this decision. And then we allow you to actually modify this. So if we're recommended, sorry, I can't see, it's, it's a bit unclear. But if we're recommended 10 partial fronts and five no fronts, if you know you've got your deprovisioning application and you're not gonna be using these instances, you can actually go in there and, and change it. And, and that's fine. The other thing we do, and this is, I will say this is a core differentiator. How many people here know about NFUs? Anyone? Nah. Not many people know about it. So NFUs is a way that AWS tracks, and I recommend you go, if, you, if you're interested in reservations, go and research AWS uh, NFUs. It's a way they track size flexible reservations. So if you buy, say, a 2XL, I can't remember the units, they assign a unit value to that. So if you move, or if you migrate a, a 2XL to an XL, it sort of essentially halves the units associated. So you're not losing the units, but you're, so I think 2XL is about eight or 16. If you go down to a XL, it's in four. What we do is we allow you to, or we provide the graph to show, this is your actual interviews for a specific instance in a specific region. And we can actually see what reservations you've got associated to that. So right now that's about 10%. If, if I was uh, managing this power, I'd try to get that to about 50 to 60 percent. So again, this comes down to business justification. The other thing we do, which is really cool, and again, it's very hard to see here, but we tell you the exact period that you're going to break even, and we tell you exactly how much you're going to save a month. We also provide, as I said, amortized uh, reports. So here, it will say something like, uh, break even point is in 6.9 months, you're going to save $30,000 a month by procuring this RI. Who here thinks that's cool? Awesome. Go for it. Yeah. Do you guys have any sort of API or something that you can add to it? Or is it just for Yeah, we do. We do. We, we have API actually where we're redefining our APIs at the moment. We're building a whole new API so you can, uh, everything you do in our platform, you will be able to do in, in free APIs. That's on the roadmap, so I can't give dates, but that is the first key activity they're doing. They're redefining, they're going API first. Uh, but yeah, we do have APIs. Any other questions on this before I move on? Go at the back. Sorry, I, I'm just having trouble. Come, come on up, come on up. Um, come on up I've only got a couple more slides, guys, so I'm nearly done. Uh, good question. So we build that through our logical groupings. So you can define, so when you build a group, you can define the business structure and and that will then align. So if you, as I say, if you want to report by LOBs, lines of business, then you build that based on those logical groupings and those groupings can be used throughout the entire platform. So even in right sizing, you can define a group of instances that you want to report on based on a line of business. Fantastic. So one of the key aspects in terms of uh, cost control, I didn't actually talk about it, is around you know the AWS taking advantage of reservations, also of consolidated billing. So yeah, if you have a consolidated billing account, uh, we will pull that in. We'll pull in all the linked accounts and we'll report across account. So we will see exactly where the reservation has been used, and if you've got underutilized RIs, so. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. If you've got under you, this is a cool example. Uh, again, it's the same customer I mentioned before, it's uncool. Uh, they're very mature. And I worked on them on a, a strategy just recently around RIs, reservations. What, what they're actually doing is, they've got a strategy to procure RIs very constantly. Well, I'm talking about every month. So they've got a lot of underutilized RIs. A lot. And that's just the way. They're saving a lot of money, but they've also got underutilized RIs. So we worked out a way to report on the underutilized RIs and present this back to the DevOps teams. Because uh, you guys know, I don't know if you know DevOps teams, but uh, as the so-called shift left, they're always spinning up, spinning down on demand infrastructure. So by presenting them with specific instances that have a reservation that's being underutilized, 
they're telling their team, hey, this is cheap, use it. And they're reducing their under... Uh, well, it's already been paid for. Pardon? It's already been paid for. Exactly right. If it hasn't been paid for, they're gonna pay for it anyway by the end of the month. So yeah, 100% right. So that answer? Oh, someone's hand? Yep. How much time do you need to collect data to get these information off? Two questions. Okay, so first one uh, was it how long do we? So we collect we collect two types of data. First is billing information we pull back from DBR cost and usage reports from AWS, and we process that daily. So we process the billing information daily. Metrics uh, we process every fifteen minutes. So metadata associated with an asset, any met metrics coming from CloudWatch uh, or, or so forth, we process every 15 minutes. And how long do you have this to provide advice on? So for reservations, yes. we allow you to determine the length, up to 30 days, but we allow you to determine the length. Um, realistically, what I say is, you know, you need to have a look at the underlying graphs, the information to see if it's constant. And once it's constant, and NFUs as well, because remember, if you are purchasing size flexible reservations, it, it doesn't really matter if one instance type is going to be deprovisioned, as long as you've got enough of that series in that region of that OS uh, to take over in case it goes away. But in terms of how long, it is hard to say. I, I just say look at the underlying data to understand. Uh, that is pretty steady. Now, if you know, you know you've got inside information in your organization, if you know that you're onboarding, you're, you're actually about to go and provision a lot more servers of a certain type, then it's not too much of a worry. If you're going to deprovision servers, then you need to you know, think about okay, maybe I won't, at this point in time, I won't purchase so much. Well, very dynamic organizations that are paying these things. Yeah. So that's when I use the NFU. Because what you're going to be looking at is the usage over a period of time. So remember, just because you purchase ROs and they may not be completely utilized, uh, it doesn't mean you're making a loss. So we can track how much you've made per RI. So you may have an RI that's utilized for seven, eight, nine months. And you'll still save a lot of money, even though for three months that RI wasn't utilized. So again, it takes a bit of inside knowledge. Uh, track the usage, track the patterns, and, and then make a decision, especially for organizations that are moving to, say, serverless or, or have a very much uh, an on-demand type infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you do, not cluster metrics, but we, out of the box, we gather the metrics that AWS provide, Mem not, not memory. CPU, disk, etc. To get memory, where there's multiple ways. We can hook up to if, if you're if you're using the paid version of CloudWatch or if you're using another tool. We also have an API that you can push metrics to. If we don't have, we've got out of the box integration for a lot of monitoring solutions. If we don't support it, then we have an API and you can push metrics straight to it. The default is good enough. Pardon? The default metrics are good enough. Depends. Again, it depends. If you trust just measuring best to say this CPU, if it's CPU intensive, then yeah, it is good enough. Uh, but you then need to <laughs> you then need to really understand, you know, okay, the best way to put it, it's good enough if you're talking about development service. It's not good enough for production. That's the best way I can put it. Alright. This is the last phase. I've got three slides. And it's a bit different to what I was going to talk about because the three, the three specific areas we're going to delve into now are not really specific or related to phase three. I say they're more related to an organization's maturity level. And I actually had an argument with the second one there about where it belongs in this blueprint. I leave it in phase three and I'll explain why in a second. But these are very important and the reason I put them here is because this is what most of my conversations have been about recently. I've heard containers mentioned a few times today. We actually got, a, this, is, this is awesome, we're patent this technology, so we can actually track costs now across, across containers. At the task level, at the namespace level, if you've got a Kubernetes cluster, if you've got labels associated, 
we can look at the relative usage, again I'll say CPU, memory or combination, and associate a cost to that task. And then you can start to report on the cost of your containers. A whole bunch of pretty graphs there, and they look cool. We also get the underlining uh, data as well. But this is something that a lot of organizations are looking at at the moment. The next one is my favorite. As I said, coming from a data center background, this is something we used to uh, push to the side and tell people never take any infrastructure out of my uh, VC environment. You, you leave my SX host here, you're not touching it. Um, but this is a migration assessment. We're able to provide the same reports to data center, to VMware, to Hyper-V, as we do for cloud. What we can also do is provide an assessment. And, and very quickly, what the assessment does? We will take your infrastructure, we will provide you with an equivalent cost in AWS, we will also tell you what the cost would look like if you were to right size using our algorithm on the way in, as well as if you were to you know, apply an RI to that instance. So we provide this to the business, so then they can go, well to the IT team, so you can go to business and say, this is what it's going to cost us from an infrastructure perspective. So this is pretty cool. And as you can see, we're actually, we're very an advanced partner with AWS, and this is one of the areas we've got competency, competency in with AWS. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but is there any questions? So how do we sign up? Process. Tell you in about one minute. I don't want my slide then, I'll tell you. You'll ask a few questions. There you go. That's it, guys. Sorry, last one. You can go now. <laughs> last one. This is, uh, this is new to me, new to us, new in terms of cloud health. This is what Gartner, quote Gartner, exploit cloud economics. Is that the only thing I think they got right? Essentially, what it is is turning things on and off, lights on, lights off. It's uh, something that's been talked about a lot. So we've partnered with a leader in this space called Park My Cloud. Very strong partnership. We're building the integration now that's coming out in the next week or so, where you can start to have advanced scheduling, advanced workloadings in terms of having a server on and off. The binding schedules. Um, if you want to know the technical information, come see me afterwards. I'll have to provide it with you, or to you guys. But we see there's a lot of value attributed to this. It is a core cost control strategy that a lot of organizations are looking at. Turning a server or having a dev server on, having your whole dev servers on only nine to five, has just saved you a third of the cost of your whole dev environment. It, it's quite simple, simple maps. And I've been going to a few of their customers recently because we're now talking to their customers. And it, it tells you what they've saved in terms of having their infrastructure turned off during certain periods of time. For testing, they have it off for more than just you know the day period of the day, and it's huge amounts. It is quite astonishing just by turning servers off. It's, it's all on demand, right? It's all on demand. It's not like the old days where you had to contact your VMware rep or actually, if you're running out of capacity, your VMware rep will call you up out of the blue. Your Cisco rep will pull you out of the blue and give you a million dollar, ten million dollar purchase order. Everything you use now costs money in AWS. And, and this is one thing that we've found actually saves a lot of money. So this is automated, though, this is part of what you're doing, or you're just recommending to switch? To Sorry, guys, there's no back recommend, to Making recommendations about turning it off, or do I need to, need to use some other tools? No, no, this, this tool itself, Pugman Cloud, does all of that. It, 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 you set the schedule, you associate the, the infrastructure, it will turn it on and off. It's got a whole bunch of advanced stuff. Happy to give you the information. As I said, I'm still learning about this tool. But I've been talking to the customers that utilize it, and I've been going on a few courses. It, it is really cool. It is really cool. Finally, last slide. Sorry, Daryl. Last slide before I collapse. You haven't gave <laughs> This is my key takeaways, guys. As I said, think about this as a transformation if you really want to undertake it. Think about defining how you want to measure success because your boss wants to know exactly what the outcome is. I save X amount of money on current infrastructure. We've migrated X amount of infrastructure. These are the controls we put in place. We put policies in place to track against spikes in spend. We can actually give, put budgets in here. We're now tracking against projects, programs that are reaching a certain amount on 80% of their budget. The final metrics. As you become more mature, this is not something you do once off. 
RIs, uh, uh, right sizing, sorry, is something that needs constant you know, evolution. Finally, I actually stole this line from uh, another another gentleman who uh, gave a fantastic present presentation on uh, DevOps. But if there is anything you like here, anything I spoke about that you believe will help you help your organization, steal it, go to your boss, say, I've got a fantastic idea. It doesn't have to be our technology. Put it in front of him. I'm sure this is going to be put online. But there is one asked. If you do that, please, I frequent the bars around this area quite often. You have to buy me a beer. That's the only ask. All right, guys, that's, that's it for me. Before I let you go, is there any questions, first of all? You still haven't told us how to sign up for cloud. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, have a free, we have a free trial. Go to cloudhealth.com. Um, go to cloudhealth.com. Sign up. If you're, he'll give you the card, his card. I haven't got cards on me, David. I'm going to pull up David. Now, David's our newest member. He's been here a long time, about two days at Cloud Health. And he just wants to have a couple words, guys. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm surprised that people, no one in the front row got any uh, Richard's vomit because um, I was pretty sure that was coming. I've seen Richard be every colour of a parakeet in the past two days. So, uh, well done. But um, yeah, I, I guess I'm, uh, I'm the newest member of the team. Uh, my, my focus is going to be on the enterprise for, for ANZ. Um, at least uh, my boss, who is very well known in the industry, given that she spent four years uh, at AWS. Um, she's obviously focuses on, on Asia Pacific, but. Um, some of the things that I've heard in the past few days from two or three customers that I've met or spoken with, um, that's the key reason I joined. Um, I asked them you know, why they're a customer and why they continue to be. So some of the, some of the interesting things that they share with you is just is this mind-blowing. So the cost ones are very simple, right? But um, some of the more advanced features that we're working through in terms of API integration, um, I look at some of the sponsors on the board there, they're already customers and some are going to be customers pretty soon. So. Um, what, we are, what we're obviously working towards is, is looking at you know, building out that um, cloud center of excellence uh, within a business because it's becoming more and more of a problem the more that you migrate to cloud. So um, yeah, that's probably enough of, of us, but I guess I just want to um, thank Polar7 and, um, and Gary and Daryl for all their support. I hear you've done a lot with Elise um, and, and Richard and the team, so I guess I'll be looking forward to drinking more with you in the future. Um, but uh, all the pizza's gone, so I'll have to stick with beer. Um, so. But again, uh, just, just one final thing, uh, we, we do have the, uh, an award that's actually been uh, awarded to a member of, uh, not to Gary uh, <laughs> himself or Daryl, a member of the team uh, is Varun around. Yeah. So Varun is being uh, awarded the Advanced Operation Certification, and that's not the first in Sydney, that's the first in the world, so well done. Right. Good stuff. Well done. Well done. If you do have any questions, my name is David, I am short, but you probably can hear me, you probably can't see me at the back. Um, just come up in and uh, we'll give you some information you ask for and uh, share some more. Yeah, Thanks very much. Excellent. So we're just going to take a picture. So yeah, so Varun has gone and done all the training for uh, Cloud Health Education. As you can imagine, as a tool, it is quite uh, involved. It does a lot of stuff, so it's pretty awesome. So well done, Varun. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Cloud Health. Richard, thank you very much for that. That was great. Um, next month, we're not here next month. Does anybody know what's on in around this time next month? Yeah, has everybody signed up? Yeah, so if anybody turns up here and says, where are you, we'll say, uh, you're supposed to be somewhere else. <coughs> so thank you very much all for coming. Uh, so sign up for the summit on the 10th to 12th of April. Keep in touch, uh, go and check out our webinars. Thanks to um, uh, Cloud Health and Dynatrace this evening. They'll probably hang around for a bit if you've got any questions. Take it easy. Thank you very much for coming. Talk soon. Where's the draw? Sorry, the draw. Well, I forgot to draw quickly. Sorry. So we have the draw. So the door, the door prize. Um, so you can hold the prize. You can hand it out. So we got. Uh, so it's gone through our uh, AI and ML um, algorithm to come up with a couple of couple of people. Yeah. So we won't tell you the secret sauce that uh, worked that out. So do we have a? Vinrod Snee Kermar. No? Vinrod? No? No Vinrod? Vinrod? We do? Yes? I think it's Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey? They've come up. Yes? So Vinrod, thank you very much. Because you've got to answer a couple of questions now. <laughs> so thank you very much. So,
Or just tell us who you are and where you're, where you're from and why, about what you thought about this evening. Oh, I thought it was good. Uh, I work for a company which you might know, all of men and all. Oh, cool. I work in the DevOps team and uh, I'm uh, working on Docker and Kubernetes now. So the, in good doing Kubernetes? Yeah. Yeah, are you guys using Cloud Yeah. 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 I've got Cloud Cloud, we use Cloud You use another one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Peter, I thank you very much. That's it folks, thank you all for coming, take it easy, we'll see you soon.